the Mox return to Finley Stadium with head coach Tom Art leading the way. We got an opportunity to do something different. You got to do it better than you've ever done it before. You got to communicate better than you've ever communicated before. It's got to mean more to you than it's ever meant to you before. And he ends up touchdown. This opportunity, this moment, today, forward. Right, to give that type of effort every single day. Straight back to throw and sack. You got the opportunity to set the standard for what it means to play at Chattanooga. You're watching Inside Chattanooga Football, hosted by head coach Tom Arth and the voice of the Mox, Jim Reynolds. Inside Chattanooga Football is presented by Allegra, 24 hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. Coca Cola, Chattanooga Coca Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca Cola bottler. Welcome to Inside Chattanooga Football. I'm Jim Reynolds as the Chattanooga Mox football team enjoying an open date this weekend before the final game of the regular season that will be on Saturday the 18th when the Mox hosts East Tennessee State at Finley Stadium. On the program today, highlights of UTC's overtime loss to Wofford from Saturday. Mox in the final minute came back, tied the game with 16 seconds left to play with a touchdown and a two-point conversion, sending the game into OT, which Wofford eventually won in that second overtime period. That and more when Inside Chattanooga Football returns in just a moment. This segment of Inside Chattanooga Football is sponsored by Coca-Cola. Chattanooga Coca-Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca-Cola bottler. And we welcome you into Spartanburg, South Carolina and the Wofford College campus where this afternoon the number nine ranked Wofford Terriers take on the Chattanooga Mox this afternoon on an overcast and unseasonably warm day. These two teams, Wofford and Chattanooga, will get together. Wofford holds the all-time lead 12 to 11. As we are ready, lights are on here in Spartanburg. Skies are overcast, temperatures in the low 70s, and Dowdell will take a knee, and Chattanooga will start at the 25-yard line. They send two to the right with the ball on the left hash mark, a wing to the left for Copeland. Terriers coming on a blitz, and they got him. Taken down by Colton Clemens at the 16-yard line. They motion Young to the right. And it's a give to Bridges, and he has room. He takes it inside the 10, inside the 5. Victor Olmo, who kicked the game-winning field goal last week at Samford on his field goal tries this year. He is 6 out of 7, and the kick is true. Victor Olmo with a 20-yard field goal, and, and he's got his 17th there. And Stoddard stood up and sat down before he even gets to the line of scrimmage. From the 21st and 10, Copeland, yet another flat pass, caught by Alfonso Stewart. He is submarine, keeps his feet. Is the ball out? The Terriers are claiming the ball came out and they recovered it. And it is Wofford football. Devin Watson. Devin the Watson guy. comes out of there yep. with the ball. Fake of the dive. Here's McAfee. First down run. Keeps his feet. And he's in. Touchdown, Terriers. Lennox McAfee drives into the end zone. A freshman from Bradley Central High School in Cleveland, Tennessee, throws an Alfonso Stewart first down catch. This is the 17th play of this drive. Olmo looking for his second field goal of the day. This is a 28-yarder from the hash mark. His holder is Colin Brewer, and the kick is good and Wofford's lead is now a single point. 7-6, Wofford leading it over Chattanooga. Second half about to begin in Spartanburg. Senior out of Dekula, Georgia will go from the wing bone and it's a handoff and there's not much there. Terriers intent on running between the tackles and Chattanooga intent on not letting it happen. Fourth and five at the Mach 27. Newman, play action, here comes pressure. He'll throw incomplete. First and 10 mocks. And the freshman quarterback, Copeland, with four coming at him. Going to throw it deeper this time. Caught. 
Once again, that is Parker. He fumbles the ball. It's out. Or are they going to say the play was over? But they are going to say that Joseph Parker was down at the 35-yard line in the Terrier under the field. George B.C. with the hit. This will be a 48-yarder. It would be his longest of the year if he connects. The spot down by Brewer. Kick has the distance wide right. Wofford hangs on to the lead. Who will work out of the gun on first down. And he throws it to Blake Morgan. Morgan is room down the far sideline. Jitterbugs to the 20. Blake Morgan to the 16. That's 17 yards on the pass. We're under eight minutes to play in the fourth. You see Stoddard among the leaders in touchdowns. He gets the give right side. He got there. Touchdown Terriers. Here comes the snap. And it's a rugby style kick. And it was deflected. And it doesn't travel very far at all. It'll die at the 43-yard line. That is just a 21-yard punt. The mocks are out of timeouts. Four receivers. Copeland with pressure coming. Scrambles. He's going to tuck it and run. Takes it to the 10. Wheels his way down to the 5. They'll stop the clock to move the sticks at his first and goal. 22 seconds remaining, Wofford up eight points. Second and goal from the six, trips to the left. Tight end to the right. Bridges the running back, Copeland out of the gun. Here's the snap, he's looking. Throws it, back of the end zone, and it is caught. Touchdown Chattanooga. Bingo Morton with the catch. Obviously, will go for two, looking to tie the football game. Wofford leads 14 to 12. They put the ball in the center of the field. Copeland will go up under center. Bridges is the running back. And a direct snap to Bridges. They toss it away to Stewart. He throws to the end zone. It is caught. The play works, and it is caught by the quarterback, Cole Copeland. This is the have nothing bad formation. Brandon Goodson to a knee. And how about this? For the second time this season, in a season in which we have seen nothing but nail biting football games, we're going to overtime. They have played hard all day. They played spoiler last week, looking to do it again. And uh, Van Hip will get the coin toss. This is an important coin toss. If you win it, you want to go on defense. The Mox won the toss, and they want defense first. First and goal at the two. Again, the triangle set. Stoddard right side, breaks an arm tackle. He's in, touchdown Wofford. He's been big in his career against Chattanooga. Copeland looks to throw. It is caught by Stewart at the three. He backs his way into the end zone, touchdown Mox. We're tied at 21. We will play a second overtime. First and 10, Chattanooga from there, 25, still working left to right. Play action, Copeland throws to the near side and it's intercepted. It is picked off by Devin Watson, takes it down the sideline, 40, 50, cuts it inside to the 40. Devin to the 30, can he beat Copeland to the 20? He will not get to the end zone, but nonetheless, it's an interception and Chattanooga will not score on that possession. 34-yard try to win it in double overtime. And we get a timeout taken before the snap. Timeout. Chattanooga. Hammond will snap. Mosley will hold. 33 yards. Low snap. Spot down. Kick on the way. Terriers win. Wofford has first place all to themselves. Your final score here in double overtime from Gibbs Stadium in Spartanburg. The Wofford College Terriers 24. And the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga Mox 21. Round excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. Every division, every sport, the Learfield Directors' Cup. 
The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook, find us online and on Twitter. The Learfield Directors Cup. I love all the seniors so much. They have been so nice and they're just really steady all the time. All three of them, Berg, Spoon, and Maddie, have all brought great things into our gym for the three years that I've been here and I know the four years Eden has already been here. I don't know UTC volleyball without them and that's kind of scary for next year. Sweet little Maddie girl. There are no words to describe <laughs> Maddie Marshall. <laughs> so tough. She is an amazing human being, but if I could pick one, I would just say positive. I would say resilient. I would go with resilient as well. I don't think I've ever heard her complain about the card she's been dealt. I would say Spoon is very caring. She's always asking like, how you're doing? Like, how's your family? She's very interested and just like, just genuinely wants to be a part of your life. She also does this thing where everyone in this program knows that Spoon keeps the score for everything in her head and she calls the line whether she see it, saw it or not. And she will argue it until she dies. <laughs> One word for Berg would be patient. She's also like super understanding. So sweet and upbeat too. And she's gonna be a kindergarten teacher so I think it works really well for her. She loves on all of us so much. I've actually known her since I was probably 12 and she called me one night and told me she was coming here with me and it was unreal. It was crazy. I just love Berg. We had a lot of memories of just coming into college. I came in just kind of like this little baby freshman and it was really good to have older girls I could look up to that were like kind and there for me and leaders. They're definitely my rock. Like I love them all so much. They are this program, they embody it. Obviously they will be missed dearly and everyone loves them. I don't think anyone would say a bad word about any of them. This segment of Inside Chattanooga Football is sponsored by Allegra. 24 hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. Welcome back to Inside Chattanooga Football. I'm Jim Reynolds along with Moxhead football coach Tom Arthur. Interesting to have an open date this late in the season. It's got to feel bad coming off such a such a well-played game, I thought, on Saturday. Yeah, you know, it's a, you know, it's an interesting time, you know, for an off week. I think it's great if you're getting ready for a for a playoff run. It's, you know, a little bit harder when when you're not, but um, you know, we need it. Um, you know, it'll be nice and, you know, get a chance to to come back and you know, really take a little bit off them physically, um, but really, you know, continue to push them mentally and you know to shorten up the practice a little bit but still make sure that it's really great quality work focusing on you know our performance focusing on our execution which is important at this time of the year last Saturday I thought you outplayed a very very good Wofford team the numbers the numbers say that I'm not sure the scoreboard did but the numbers do absolutely I think that uh, I think we played well in a lot of areas I think defensively um, you know to, to play you know to, to ask our guys to play any better uh, than they did would be hard Unfortunately, um, we just didn't finish. We didn't finish in the end zone, you know, as, as, as we needed to. But I think that was the difference um, really in that game was just when they were in the red area, uh, they scored touchdowns and, you know, we settled for field goals twice. Late in the game, you're down eight, Wofford has the football. Everyone knows what has to happen at that point and executed almost to perfection, I would say, with zeros on the clock. Yeah, it was uh, it was outstanding. Um, you know, unfortunately, had an opportunity. Um, you know, with about five minutes to go, where we got the ball back offensively and weren't able to do much with it. You know, ended up giving the ball back uh, to Wofford, and 
you know, had two timeouts and knew we could not let them get one first down. And our defense went out and, and shut them down. We um, were able to get the get them to force them to punt. Uh, James Stovall did a great job getting the block, and um, you know, offensively, we were able to move it down the field and, and finish with with the ball in the end zone. I was going to say, your special teams, they did what they had to do. Your defense with the hold, offense needs the touchdown and the two-point conversion. The odds of all those things are lining up. But it has to say something about your football team, how far they've come to react in that two-minute type of situation and to see all three phases kind of come together and, and you know, accomplish the task. Yeah, it was it was great to see. Um, you know, it was a great last, you know, three minutes of that game. Um, really, you know, executionally, offensively, defensively, and special teams was, you know, about as good as it can be. And... Um, you know that those are the results and that's you know that's what we're searching for you know every day you know every game is um, you know to put that together for for four quarters and I know that um, you know when we do that we're we're a very good football team I was gonna say what do you do with a week off I know it's not a week off what do you do with an open date on Saturday yeah well again it's just you know opportunity to focus on our fundamentals um, you know focus on our execution not have to worry too much about you know bog bogging our players down with what the opponent does and what their tendencies are it's just really it's about us. Hard to believe. Final game of the season, Saturday the 18th against East Tennessee State. We'll preview that game next time on Inside Chattanooga Football. Inside Chattanooga Football has been brought to you by Allegra. 24-hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. Coca-Cola. Chattanooga Coca-Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca-Cola bottler.